All right, all my loyals, welcome to the Top Billing Villains post game show presented by the great folks over at Bet US. Now, I already know it's only going to be a few thousand of you people watching this video, right? If the Seahawks won, it would be tens of thousands of people watching this video, right? So, I always got to give a shout out to the loyals, all my top billing villains out there. Rain, sleet, or snow. You guys are tapping in to hear that real shit, right? That real football shit. I'm going to give you the real. Your man, Eat at Geno's, did not play well today. But he was one of several people who did not play well today. The only thing about that, if he doesn't play well, it's a direct reflection of his past, his present, and future. Despite the fact that before then, the guy was destroying it right so i thought he had a very poor game on this one right here but he had a ton of help from the guys around him one being dennis rodman jr himself dk metcalf this guy has had some very up and down games this year now a lot of his apologists and fanboys was oh no 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 this is not in that no nah, brother he's had some explosive plays centered around some pretty poor plays and this is one of them right here i want you to watch this play what do you see on this right yeah, people, the, the lay people are going to say Geno Smith threw an interception, right? Where's this going? Geno Smith is throwing to a spot. He's trying to throw this guy open, right? He's got nice leverage on here. What you would want him to do is this. Keep coming flat down the line of scrimmage, peer, and it's all to the good. It's a completion. What does he do? The same things that I've seen him do for the past few seasons covering this guy. He gets lazy on his routes or he thinks that routes don't have a determining point, right? Or they should be run however he would like for them to be run. He starts to drip upfield this way, right? There's a difference between going right here and right here. Going the ladder, right? Going the ladder right there allows for this guy to then cut in front of you, right? Because he has the angle on you. It's that simple. Look at him drift upfield. Did you see that? How is he up here now? Watch where he was originally. Right? Look at look at this, right? If you wanted him to come down right here, he's on the 30. Run flat down the 30. So we're, we're going to draw this down to 30 right here, right? At least where he's at. So it's my, like the 28, 29 right here. Let's see where he actually ends up. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the this is not like TV where it's going to follow the camera, so I can't do it like that. But you get the point right here. You get the picture. Your man is leaning. He's leading himself up the field like this. I'm not sure why he thought that would be good, but that allows for him to get undercut. And you can see that on Geno Smith's face right there. I can read body language. He's like, what? You have to be kidding me. That's one right there. Geno Smith would usually own up to something. He's not going to throw anyone under the bus. He's the consummate professional. That right there lets you know with that body language and his face right all screwed up like that, that that was not on him. But the lay person, they want to see Geno Smith fail anyway. So logic be damned, Geno Smith sucks. But with all that being said, I still thought Seattle was extremely competitive with San Francisco. And on the defensive end, man, it bowed up quite a few times uh, where I thought that the defense would collapse a lot sooner than it did. The offensive side of the ball, obviously, I'm going to work with that. I got to get up out of here, right? It's extremely late right here, and I know nobody's going to be watching this bad boy. So this is an exercise of futility after three weeks, or really after – Almost three and a half. Oh, look, almost, yeah, almost three and a half seasons, right? Of when this team loses, uh, the viewership being cut tremendously. So I'm only talking to the loyalists right here. This right here, I thought was awesome. But what happened? Look, off his back foot, eat at Geno's with the rocket launcher to DK Metcalf with the over the shoulder, Ken Griffey, John, and you know the rest. But the Seattle Seahawks couldn't get out of its way or couldn't get out of their way with careless penalties, whether it be a false start, whether it be a holding penalty. I mean, a comedy of errors really set the Seattle Seahawks back when 
Hey, man, in all actuality, they were right there, right? And I said it before. I still think San Francisco is the most talented team in the league. Both teams had a ton of injuries to some key players, right? And some even happened during the game as well. So take that for what it's worth there. I definitely can't wait to see the rematch of this bad boy because it, it, the, the score may not indicate it. You have some people these days, right? They'll say something is like a, a nine-point game and it's a blowout. You know what I mean? But uh, for people who actually watched the game, this game was very competitive. It could have actually came down to a few plays, right? It never actually comes down to a few plays, but there are a few, few plays I'm pretty sure Seattle will want back. And this is one right here with Kenneth Walker doing this. You can see him right here. Tyler Lockett had already shifted. He's going in motion. All he had to do was literally stop, literally stop. And this is a touchdown. He had to come to complete motion. He's sitting up there just jumping before the snap. Not sure why he did that at all, right? Um, man, that's puzzling right there. But this was a touchdown. They ended up still getting a touchdown, I believe, on this drive right here. But it could have been a lot sooner. And you never know how it goes. But then again, right, on the ensuing possession, the defense got ran through like shit through a goose. Gino's first interception... I would put on him, but he definitely has some help right here in the form of bang. You saw that? He could feel the pressure right there. Your man Stone Feet Forsyth, right? Getting that ass clapped, right? Getting them cheeks clapped, right? <laughs> and uh, Geno Smith having to launch that bad boy before he could really set his feet there. Um, but, hey, I mean, it is what it is right there. Of course, Tyler Lockett going to go with some little alligator arms, but, you know what I mean? I have to put that one on the combination of Geno and, of course, Stone Feet Forsyth, as we can see right here, uh, going against Bosa. Now, they show, and man, that was off of a chip, too. So he got chipped and everything and was still able to get by Stone Forsyth. So Geno can feel this. I mean, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> What are you going to do? You got, <laughs> look at that. He threw that ball and was immediately trying to protect them ribs right there. Um, but threw a little bit too high. Maybe if that's Jake Bobo or somebody, that's what they need to do, man. A lot of these red zone opportunities, we saw Jake Bobo last year. The guy's a monster with even exchange situations in the air. Why not put him out there, right? You got Tyler Lockett going up on plays. He's not going over. He's not going to go over the top on somebody, right? Or maybe not even Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, DK Metcalf, not his game either. But that is Jake Bobo's game. Why Why is he never in some of these situations right here? And, um, yeah, that. So, of course, people going to put that all on Geno. But come on, man. The guy's getting bared down on by freaking uh, Nick Bosa. Man, it is what it is. Man. Geno Smith has to be one of the only quarterbacks that have to go against a segment of his fan base, as well as the color commentary on the damn broadcast. How in the hell do you not see this in the broadcast, right? They were saying that DK Metcalf, I don't know if they said something about the throw, or I think they said the cornerback here, like, deflected the pass. He didn't touch the ball, man. It's this dude and his inability to catch some of passes that you would expect an elite-level receiver to catch. Right, there were several like this in this game from just about every receiver there. But is that how? What does that guy do with the cornerback, man? That's that dude right there in those hands, man. He's stone feet for Scythe, stone mason hand DK. One more game here, a common theme. You getting look? What was it? Anthony Bradford got that prison loving right there. Well, people bearing him down on Geno Smith, and he actually makes a very accurate throw. I forget what Kirk Herb. I can't stand Kirk Herb Street either. Why is he on NFL telecast as well as college? Won't they just keep the man in college? You couldn't find nobody else out there to do color commentary besides Kirk Herb Street. This was an entirely different network too. It's not even ESPN. Come on, man! Stop recycling this, these dudes, man. Ah, man, it's Herb. He's a Herb. <laughs> That's that New York right there. You don't know about that. That man is a Herb. But check this out right here. Uh, did the cornerback do anything on this? This hits this man's right in the hands, right? I remember a few weeks ago, they had one where a whole bunch of apologists were like, the ball was tipped. He's a fucking NFL receiver, man. Catch the fucking ball. This shit is not fucking rocket science. 
the fuck is going on out here, man? I'm tired of you people with this bullshit, man. It's like talking to fucking little kids and shit. People who ain't never fucking played the game in their life. This shit is crazy to me, dude. I'm talking about shit like this. This shit is ridiculous, man. You can't keep giving this guy a pass. Yeah, he's a badass athlete. No doubt about that. Make it to where he gets two or three catches of the game and they all deep ball touchdowns. Cool. Do the majority of the heavy lifting with Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jake Bobo, and Tyler Lockett. I notice when they go to DK Metcalf early and often, shit just does not go right. You can't rely on somebody, you know what I'm saying, when the ball's hitting them in the hands, they, they're not grasping it. You're not helping out your quarterback, and they're going to always put it on the quarterback, man. Yo, you want to get a 150% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000? Head on over to BetUS and enter the promo code YouTube150. 24-hour payouts, 24-7 customer support. BetUS has it all covered. Remember, promo code YouTube150 and you get a 150% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. BetUS. Where the game begins. Now, people like to talk about body language or something like that. Like, what was this right here? Come on, man. You know what I mean? I've, I've sat like that before, but that's what I'm getting on the hose. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's that lean back joint when you getting on the hose. He ain't getting on no hose right here, right? Your man sitting there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Let's go on to the next segment. What the, what is this? Kirk the Herb Herb Street right here said something about this throw being late. I don't even understand what he was talking about. The throw was on time. The ball hit Smith and Jigba right in his hands. This is not supposed to be some type of corner of the end zone. It's a fade ball. Let him go up, get it, and squeeze it. But you can see right, right the ball doesn't hit his hands correctly. It's already coming out. <laughs> right? It, he makes it easy for the cornerback, who I'm not even sure actually touches it. Does not squeeze it. Look, does not squeeze it correctly. I don't know. Say what you want, man. I say Smith and Jigba had some moments. Tyler Lockett had some moments. Metcalf had some moments. Ryan Grubb. I didn't like the fact that Ryan Grubb was forced into being something that he's not. He's not a run game guy. He turned into Shane Waldron this game. It was like run the ball first, second down, let Geno uh, try to bail you out on third down while he's getting pressured. It looked like a repeat of last year. Let the man just pass though. He's a passing game guru, right? He instantly came in the league and looks like he's one of the better passing game guys. Just let him do what he has to do, right? Don't try to pressure this man into being balanced because I feel like uh, he's at his best when he's able to just call the game the way he wants to. He looked like he was forced to call runs and it kind of made the offense sputter. All right, last one right here. You know, I'm going to come back with the all 22 uh, break down some of the defensive plays, right? I thought those guys were playing pretty good on defense, man. Tough team to match up with, right? Very physical team. And, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely got some work to do in that department. Need some guys to come back, some key guys to come back. But uh, no excuses on that front. San Francisco was hurt as well on offense. But what do you guys think about this one right here, right? Now, this would have been a great catch. But, man, that close right there. Oh, man. Sometimes you got to, I don't know, man. Sometimes you just got to know how to do it. Your boy Lockett need to be talking to him because you got to come down with the Michael Jackson toes, right? The smooth criminal toes, you know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to step right there, have some, have some ankle flexion, right? Get those two toes down and just that close for your quarterback, man. But nobody's going to point out stuff like that, right? The guy... Those are multiple touchdowns to DK Metcalf, one nullified and one right here that probably some other guys are probably coming down with as a touchdown, right? Chris Carter for sure. But yeah, so I don't know, man. I said it before. I, I, I think they're very competitive with the San Francisco 49ers and I think the world of the San Francisco 49ers, but man. It's a work in progress. This is the first year of the regime. Mike McDonald is learning on the job. Anybody out there was saying, saying all this crazy stuff about expecting the Seattle Seahawks to be in the Super Bowl and all that. That's just nonsense, man. That's that fanboy talk. And I try to run fanboys the hell away from us so we can get down to talk to real football heads, right? Not goofballs like the one dude who said the Seattle Seahawks were a lock to win the NFC West and all that goofy shit. Like, come on, man. D don't come around here with that. There are a lot of people out there covering the Seattle Seahawks 
why you pick this channel, right, with the guy with the real football head guy that's, you know what I'm saying, that's not trying to hear all that to come here with that, right? If you adjust your expectations and have realistic expectations, to me, the Seahawks may be further along than a lot of people probably thought they would be. Very talented team, no doubt about that there, but all new schemes, all new regime, man, sometimes it takes time, and you can see. So that's three wins in a row, three losses in a row, but to me, man, I'm starting to see stuff that I wanted to see there, and you know if some of the players come back, uh, it could be a little bit of a different story. So, Ryan Grubb, I'll do it. Uh, although you guys know him from college, he's learning the NFL game, learning what works on the NFL. You're not just going to out-talent people in the NFL. There are just teams that are going to be flat out more talented than you or just as talented. So, take that for what it's worth. But we'll see. I, but I appreciate all my loyals out there, man. Much love to everybody out there. Who's tuning in, who always tunes in, man. I'll enjoy chopping it up with football with you guys, man. Nine out of ten times, man, everybody out there is dope to me. So it is what it is, man. But it is what it is. If you get on over to BetUS as well, make sure you enter the promo code YouTube150. Get up to $2,000 on your first three deposits with 10% gambling insurance. All right. Salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.